Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Taylor Jones, and do you have any idea what time it is? Last time on Cold Man's Winter. Taylor Jones was telling a story about what it's like for Tom to live in a society where everybody don't care much about safe sex anymore. And through all the hardships that Tom had been dealing with, he started to realize that when he had a nightmare, he had no other choice but to leave Mustard, California behind. And due to his family, mostly his mother and father and his older sister, Latrice, calling him a traitor. And all, all of the town, including the police officers, started to harass him, make fun of him. Especially when Jubilee started to kick him out the house, knowing that he, that he was scared. But he wasn't scared. He knows that having sex unprotectively was wrong. But... The whole world, the whole town turned on him still. So how will Tom survive, especially since he moved out of Mustard, California to South Central Los Angeles, especially since it's July 1994. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Cold Man's Winter Safe Sex Part 2. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Taylor Jones, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. And right now, what you're about to watch is part two of Safe Sex from Cold Man's Winter. Now, last time I told the story, I stopped at a point where Tom left his family behind from Mustard, California, and he moved on to South Central Los Angeles, and everybody was betrayed. I mean, was betray betrayed because of Tom. Well, actually... They weren't. They hated on him. But remember, this was July of 1994. And with, with only one month remaining, everything started to go completely downhill for Mustard. And people, they still hated on, on him, on Tom. And Jubilee, they they took her side like, man, he's, man, Tom's such a sissy, man. Why can't he just, just get it on? Like, what the heck he waiting for? You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, Tom, he just he just couldn't take take a chance. He couldn't take a chance going back to South, I mean, to Mustard. But while things were going out of out of hand, he just moved on. He started taking good care of himself. He actually is doing a good job. He even got prepared for UCLA in a month. Now this time. August, August 1994, he attended UCLA and everybody who actually left muster to go to go to that same school as Tom did. Some of them recognized him for being considered the sellout all because his girlfriend Jubilee. And even though all the town, this, this, this spat on him. On his image like peed on it and stomped it on his reputation some people were, were questioning him like is this true Tom had no other choice but to say yes it's true even though he was still hurt he dealt with depression but he kept kept going forward he decided you know what why should I be depressed what am I waiting for like why am I not breaking up with Jubilee? And he just like focused on his homework. He focused on his life, trying to avoid everything that went down. And as for Jubilee, she was just fronting, faking the funk and all that, having her victorious reign. And all of a sudden, things got out of hand. Matter of fact, even when it was Labor Day weekend, Tom never went back to his family. But 
But instead, he actually did went back to Mustard. He picked up Denise and, um, Denise and Angela. Ah, crap, I keep forgetting. His little sister was Angela. And her bro little brother was Tom. He picked them up, take them, took them to his new new location where he's living at because it was Labor Day weekend and he made sure to uh, spend quality time with them because he cared about them because they were the ones that felt hurt about Tom's departure, mad at Latrice and their parents, and he even treated them to a movie. Made sure to drop him and drop them off on the very next day, which was like a Sunday. And they were just glad that his college journey is starting off smoothly, even though freshman year can be a pain in the butt. But not only that, while Labor Day weekend was taking place, one of Jubilee's Longtime friends, Suzanne, she actually drove by Tom's new apart apartment in South Central a couple times. Now, when the first first day when he started living there, he saw a convertible, a 1964 Chevrolet convertible, Impala, that is, a 64 Impala, driving by, and no no hydraulics but rolling on D's Dayton rims oh man Suzanne had a really nice car every time they drove every time she drives by she always sees Tom outside the apartment like what is he doing what is he doing outside his new apartment let's just say that he is Practicing his basketball moves, like trying to get fit and overcome his issues. Other times, he's just reading his Bible because he is faithful to God and he started to put his trust in him through bad times. But then all of a sudden, when Suzanne stopped by at Mustard, she spotted Jubilee and her friends having a good time, getting high, drinking alcohol, and all of a sudden, Suzanne was like, Jubilee, what is going on? And that's when Jubilee started to uh, get loose, like, get out of hand. I mean, what? What do you mean what's going on? I mean, it's been so long, so long, to, man, I'm just glad to see you back. Like, no, 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 please, don't, don't hug me. Don't hug me. I don't understand. Understand what? I mean, come on, tell me. Tell me, Suzanne. What's going on? Is it about Tom? I mean, and what I did to him? Well, yeah, you know that little coward never had sex with her. I mean, well, that's the thing. I mean, he's living in South Central Los Angeles now, and I've been driving by his neighborhood for a while. Well, have you talked to him? No. He's your, he's your, per, I mean, he's your property. I mean, what, what did, what happened? So, she, so Jubilee started fronting, talking mad noise about Tom, and not to mention. Oh, if that's the case, then why is everybody turning turning out against him? Turning turning against turning their backs on Tom. And then oh yeah, I remember. Because of you. And all of a sudden, like, hey, 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 you don't talk about me. You don't blame me. You don't come here. You was my homegirl. Well, I was. But I see that your other homegirls have got you misled ever since I went to UCLA. Matter of fact, I'm surprised that me and Tom go into the same school. So? So? You better 
do something about me. You better tell the whole town of Mustard, California, that you made the biggest mistake and you wanna and you ought to apologize. I ain't gonna do crap. If anyone ought to apologize, it ought to be that sissy head me sissy headed little worm named Tom. Unless you got mad feelings for him. How dare you? So Suzanne slapped Jubilee back to reality and all of a sudden, hey, hey, what, what the heck is wrong with you? How dare you put your hands on Jubilee? Jubilee. The, one of the girls, she wanted to get into it with Suzanne, but unfortunately, Suzanne had to put her in reality too. But instead of a slap in the face, a punch to the nose. Ah, oh my gosh. Ah, bleeding. Oh, man. Yeah. Suzanne was peed off at at Jubilee and the homegirls. And the other homegirl that saw the whole thing high and drunk was like, oh, crap. And she held the girl who got punched in the nose and bleeding. Man, oh, man, give me some water, man. Clear, clear this blood for me. Yo, chill, man. I mean, chill, girl. Chill. And then all of a sudden, she told... Suzanne told Jubilee, I'm, ask, I'm going to ask you once more. Matter of fact, screw asking. I'm telling you, you need to apologize. Because guess what? At some point, all, all this HIV stuff is going to come back and haunt you. Matter of fact, if, in fact, you. Trust me. And then she walked out the door. Knowing how... Messed up Jubilee's mind was ever since she told a lie and matter of fact exposed Tom for B for not having unprotected sex like sex period. Peep Jubilee's homegirl starting to be like, man, what have are we gone insane? But all heck broke loose a few weeks later. Like one of the homeboys were was not feeling so well. And all the others, they were hanging out, out in the basketball basketball court. Like, yo, man, just drinking, getting high, just celebrating the fact that they they lost their virginity. Excuse me. Well, one of them like, <laughs> yeah, yo, man. Y'all got many. Yo, yo, what's up, Dang, nigga, what's wrong with you, man? I don't, I don't feel so good, man. I, I've been coughing like crazy, man. Man, man, how long has it been? Man, it's, it's been fifteen days. Dang, fifteen days. You've been sick for two weeks, man, nigga. Please. The only thing you sick is me sick from is getting that nookie, man. Yeah, yeah. Double cross, I'm serious. I'm not feeling so well, and I've been coughing like crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, shucks, son. Yo, yo, man, we, we need to get you in a hospital. Man, shut the heck up. We ain't getting that nigga on anywhere. He's going to walk it off. You a grown man. Be cool. <laughs> man, you better stop coughing, although I kick your tail. Stop it, man. No. You you want to join that? Join the sick man? I'm gonna kick your tail myself. Something, man. <laughs> and then before he actually went, got got worse, like fell in a coma. <sighs> I'm I'm sorry to say this, but <sighs> that that Negro Tom that we laughed at, I wish he was here. <laughs> I mean, and the dude that that was trying to give give the other homie a help, he's like, Tom. <gasps> you mean Jubilee's Jubilee's boyfriend? And then he started having flashbacks, and it. And then me, oh, me, and then all the homies will be like, "Oh my gosh, yo, 
But the leader of the pack, the jerk, is like, man, man, it's a bull crap, man. Man, y'all, I mean, screw Tom. I mean, no. I mean, I mean, and so one of his homos, man, man, screw you. You ain't trying to listen to him. Hey, yo, call up ambulance. Come on. Get some help, man. See, and all of a sudden, madness got worse. Because, matter of fact, the whole whole crew that was at the basketball court, like, girls were there, too. After seeing one of the, the guys get sick and fall into a coma, the ambulance came, and let's just say that it took place around 9 in the morning. And then all of a sudden, after, after the details being ran, the dude that fell into a coma, all all the thugs that that was at the ball court, including the ladies, they actually went to the hospital, mustard Clint, I mean mustard hospital. And they found found out when the doctor told him that, well, what's going on? Is he good? No, he's in worse condition. I mean, it's fatal. What do you mean, fatal? Like, what's going on? This, this young man has been infected with HIV AIDS. <gasps> what? HIV? Oh, that's bull crap. And the leader just left. Cursing like a sailor. Women started crying. And the homeboys, especially the one that was like, Yo, yo, what's going on? He was like, oh my goodness. I mean, oh my goodness. And, but before things, but before the doctor, like the doctor, he asked questions. Like, now, when y'all talk to him, remember, what was the last thing that he said while he was coughing? Well, he's saying that, that, he missed Tom. Tom. I mean, and and even the girls like Tom. Matter of fact, the whole doc. I mean, the whole people that worked in the hospital when when the dude is trying to help the guy that fell to the ground, he said when he said call Tom's name, he's like, wait a minute. Now you're not talking about the Tom that that. We we starting to hate and turn our backs on, are you? Yes, that was the one. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now who now who would who would who would do such a thing? Who would who would lead all of us to hate on Tom? And what for? <sighs> Jubilee, his girl, his girlfriend Jubilee. Oh, he exposed Tom. Now, now, don't tell me she exposed Tom for not having sex with her. Yes. And all of a sudden, since he left, things starting to get out of hand and we're lonely now. Oh, my goodness. We got to find that Jubilee. And matter of fact, we need, we need to make her confess. Man. So everybody was starting to realize that ever since the dude told the doctors what happened based on the last talk that the guy had before he collapsed on on at the basketball court, everybody's starting to realize that they did Tom dirty. Everybody did Tom dirty. Now he's in South Central Los Angeles going to UCLA, and some of the people that was in Mustard, they went to UCLA along with him. Even Suzanne, even though they never met. They just saw each other. They starting to have hardships. 
everybody in Mustard starting to slip. But at the same day, the police chief, I mean, no, the police officer that's been been hurting, assaulting the, uh, no, insulting Tom, he actually got two, two, too amped up, all because his silent partner had enough of his bull crap. He let Tom go, and he started to cuss like a sailor, drink mad, mad bottles of St. Ides, and start losing his cool. Heck, he even lost his virginity as well, trying to cool off. But instead... He he wasn't in he wasn't on the uh on duty today on that day. Why? Well, let's just say that he started feeling a little sick. No, no, worse. He was worse than sick. Like he got up. He wasn't feeling so hot. He went to the bathroom and he vomited inside the toilet. And not to mention when his partner, silent partner, knocked on the door. Hey, who the heck is it? I'm not, I'm not busy. Wait, no. Let me rephrase that. Hey, who the heck is it? And if you're the landlord... Forget it. Look, it's your partner. And I got some bad news. And then all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? Screw knocking on the door. I'm about to break in. Boom. So the silent partner broke in. And then all of a sudden, he he heard, I mean, he's heard the, the vomiting you, and all of a sudden, he opens the bathroom door like, oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. Um, Mayday, Mayday, officer down, officer down. We, I need back, I need an ambulance. Yeah, the silent partner, he decided to call for backup like ambulance. Because the, cause the cruel cop. He was getting sick and he didn't even feel so well. I mean, after he threw up a couple times, like extensive, like he was really sick. And he just fell over. Ugh. I mean, and he was sweating like crazy profusely. And all of a sudden, at the same hospital, the so-called doctor from earlier, he explained that that cruel officer that beat Tom up, he had, man, if I had to mention what type of STD he got, it was worse than normal. It was worse than just HIV AIDS. He had gonorrhea. I mean, he was, he, he couldn't breathe. I mean, he couldn't breathe normally. He was sweating profusely. He had, he had a major vomitation. It's like, man, things are getting out of hand. And all of a sudden, due to the fact that they were living in the, uh, HIV AIDS pandemic because it's remember remember it's 1994 1994 September Tom went to school and all drama took took place so back meanwhile in South Central LA Tom he actually continued to uh do what he does the most. Work on 
paying his apartment, the paying the rent, keeping his apartment in shape, and then all of a sudden, one day, Suzanne decided to give Tom a visit. At first, Tom was like, avoid it. As in, because he was reading the Bible and he, and he says out loud to himself, abstain from all appearances of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22. And all of a sudden, he just continued to read the Bible. And then, third time Suzanne knocked... Oh, for goodness sakes. That's it. Oh, by the way. Tom. He felt like he's about to go off. Because he was tired of being distracted. He opens the door and... Can I help you? Um, yeah, um, Tom, you may not know me, but I was one of Jubilee's older friends. And I just came back from Mustard. What happened? Um, I knew exactly what went down and I heard everything. And it got out of hand. And you know the police officer that that hurt you? Well, he's in the hospital. The doctor said that he has gonorrhea. I wonder why. Well, he had unprotected sex. And matter of fact, there was some other guy who uh, collapsed at the basketball court. And he's in the hospital too. Let me guess. He has AIDS too. Yes. And of course. I feel like. Mustard. Mustard owes you an apology. No. That's not the case. So why are you really here Suzanne? Well. Have you. When was the last time you talked to. Jubilee. Since the day that she wanted to do me to do it. She got, she exposed me and I can't even, and I started leaving my family behind. You mean you left, you left Latrice, your mother and father behind? Even your own bro little brother and sister? Why would you do that? Because I was considered a traitor a sellout all because I all because I never had sex and Julius ran her mouth and um, if I recall I, I had I had <clears throat> dealt with depression so I decided to overcome my fears and come here so Suzanne and Tom they talked about about the issues that went down and actually due to Jubilee I mean, I mean Jubilee's ex-friend Suzanne giving some advice like at some point you have got to come back to muster and tell Jubilee that it's over because the so-called HIV AIDS thing is taking place. And I'm afraid that you we would have been next. Yeah. So, three weeks later, it's like almost time for October. And things were getting out of hand for Mustard. But first, before he even thought of coming back to Mustard for the first time since July, 
he got his late uncle's station wagon cleaned up fresh fresh new paint and windows are clean new tires and all that trying to keep keep his car back in shape and he even planned for Suzanne to come along because she he started to find interest in Tom. I mean, he's faithful. And even at UCLA, during lunchtime, they actually have their, have their studying time together. Whether homework and or studying the Bible together. Which they start into a get on the right track of things like stay faithful to God and stay educated but for um for Suzanne she was one year older she was a sophomore and they got along just fine so one day at mustard Tom and Suzanne returned and not to mention, the silent police officer, he greeted Tom back to Mustard. And the first place he got to uh, go to was his family's house. Angela and Lil Richard, Angela and Richard, they were so happy to see him again. His mother and dad and older sister Latrice, they were just so thankful, thankful to see their son again. Like welcomed them with open arms, saying, thank you, Lord. Try to make some peace, try to right the wrongs for Tom and realize that if it wasn't for Angie and Richard for keeping him close by, they would have been better individuals. So after visiting Tom's family, Tom stopped by the hospital and paid condolences to the uh, actual one of the guys who actually passed away because his battle against AIDS it really didn't do any good it didn't do any justice but for the police officer that treated him like garbage he saw he saw Tom along with Suzanne and Tom I'm sorry that's that was one thing he wanted to tell Tom after so long, after beating him up, knowing that the whole whole city of Mustard did him dirty. And now that he he forgave Tom forgave the police officer that treated him like garbage and beat the crap out of him. He actually had one last place to stop by. Well, actually two. First, the grave site where his uncle Luke and his grandmother were buried. Had a moment of silence, planted a rose, placed a rose by their tombstones. And then all of a sudden, he stopped by to see Jubilee one last time. Well, 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 if it isn't my boyfriend, Tom, and my ex-friend, Suzanne, you can cut all that out, Jubilee. The whole world knew exactly what you did. The whole town. And, I'm, and I can't take this anymore. 
I can't take it anymore from you. You ruined my life. All because I never had sex. You told everybody the, the biggest mistake you've ever told. I have been humiliated to a depression. If I would have had sex with you, I would have used a condom. I matter of fact, that's what what I, what was that's what safe sex is for. You decided to go do it the wrong way, and now everybody is dying because of you. The police officer that beat my tail, followed by one of the dudes. He just passed away. And here we are in October, September going to October. You screwed me over. You screwed me up. But it doesn't matter anymore. Because guess what? Jubilee, I'm done with you. And just like Suzanne says, you got the whole town to apologize to. Because the only person that's getting their back turned is you. From me. And me. So Suzanne and Tom got back to the station wagon. Drove back to Oakland. No, not Oakland. South Central LA. They decided to go to a drive-in. And at the time, 1994, I don't know what movie came out in 94. But if I had to guess, mm, crap, I don't know. Let's come up with something. Oh, let's just say that they watched House Party 3. Yeah, and they had the time of their lives. They laughed, they danced, they... Oh boy, they had a good time. And all of a sudden, when it came back to Tom's apartment, they actually parted ways. But Suzanne gave Tom a kiss goodnight. Said, thank you for everything that you've done. And I am so proud of you for overcoming your fears. To tell Jubilee that it's over. So they moved on. So throughout the years. From 1994 to 1998. Tom stayed faithful to the Lord. Got educated. And matter of fact. Throughout the times. Throughout those years. Despite he still lived in Oak. In South Central Los Angeles. He and Suzanne started dating. They expected to be honest with each other. And work things out when things go wrong. Like. Patch up the, the pieces. And patch up the holes. And. Try to provide. Even though. They have been dating. They never kissed each other. Just a peck on the cheek is fine. And then. After. After 1998 graduation at UCLA. Getting a bachelor's degree. Angela and Richard were so thankful. For. For their brother Tom. Who always. Kept him going. Kept them going. Even Latrice got her act together. Rick and Tom's mom and dad. They were so thankful. To, to make it happen. I mean to be supportive. And learn what it means to be a true. Positive supporter. Especially in the family. Meanwhile. Jubilee. Well. She started getting into more trouble. Losing her virginity and making 
bigger, bigger mistakes to the fact that she got herself killed. Well, actually, she got herself killed in 1996. And Tom didn't even care about going to her funeral. Because he was over with Jubilee. And the biggest regret that could have been stuck with Jubilee for the rest of her life before she lost her life. How did she lose her life? She was in she was tested. She had HIV and um all of a sudden everybody every dude that got HIV from her they starting to uh wish death threats. That girl that girl must die. No wonder Tom was right about her. I mean, no wonder Tom left this town because of her. I'm going to kill that chick. But, dude, you got AIDS, man. You need to lay low. God works in mysterious ways. Vengeance is God's, man. Not yours. Now get some rest, man. Just chill. Just chill. You're going to get through this HIV AIDS, man. All you got to do is take it slow. I hope you're right. So she got she got AIDS, and due to being threatened and not apologizing for it, that was her number one regret. And all of a sudden, she decided to kill herself. How? She had a noose. Wrapped me, placed on her neck. She made a video in which the vi videotape was found of 15 minutes after she hung herself. But she stopped the video after saying her final words. And of course, for the funeral... Nobody even thought about showing up. Because they, cause they were actually starting to support Tom as a way of telling, the, telling Tom that he's sorry. But it was that very day in 1999 when Tom had a, had a parade. A parade. For what? He's riding around with the silent officer driving, driving a convertible. And a convertible Pontiac GTO, 1967. And everybody's, everybody's support and clapping for Tom and Suzanne, who was riding along with him. And they all had like banners like, we're sorry, we're sorry, and welcome back home to Mustard. And after dating for five years, after the parade was over, Tom decided to do what, what was meant to be done. He brought a wedding ring, asked Suzanne to marry her. She said, I do. But got married in September of 1999. And then next thing you know, after the marriage, after the after part, after the reception, everybody went home. And of course, for the first time, at the right time, Tom and Suzanne lost their virginity. However, they used a condom. Because safe sex was really important. And they actually were thankful that they waited till it was the right time. 
And that was when they got married. Because in real life, some people still believe that once you get married, it's eligible, it's legal to have sex. But some would still believe in safe sex, like use a condom. I would use a condom if I got involved. But until then, I would have to stay abstinent. Because I don't want to be the next individual to catch AIDS. I don't want that. Because in the 80s and 90s, mostly the 90s, it was a big deal. And HIV AIDS is still a big deal. Even though it died down, it's not over yet. Because Tom, he did the right thing, but nobody nobody accepted it. His so-called ex-girlfriend made the whole town, Mustard, California, turn their backs on him, calling them sellout, getting beat up by the police officer, in which the police officer, he had a second chance. After dealing with AIDS, he decided to stop drinking, stop being much of a pushover. Even though his own silent partner decided to work on his own. He realized that it was time to step up and be a real man and take jobs seriously. Not to be much of a pushover, to be abusive. And he even got awarded for getting his act together. I mean, it's so funny how life turns out. Meanwhile, Tom's little brother, Richard, he actually grew up in a five year, in a five year basis and became uh, a student of the week. Like 15 times in his schooling, in his school years. Meanwhile, his little sister, Angela, she was in the same path. So Richard and Angela started getting on the right track. They were educated. And Latrice... She got married. She left Mustard. She resides in San Francisco. And she works at a... At a, at a salon. The San Francisco Salon. With other African American women. And I mean, she's doing great. Suzanne was so thankful to graduate UCLA with a bachelor's degree in, I don't know, probably science. Meanwhile, one year later, Tom, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. So Suzanne and Tom, they finally got got together they finally got married and they they made it through through the hardships that we call reality and everybody else who was infected with stds well part of the part of the city of mustard died down they died others they learned learned things the hard way and re live with regret but they they're luckily lucky they they're still alive. And speaking of which, the funeral of Jubilee, her so-called friends that were high and drunk with her until Suzanne put them in check, they were the only ones there, like, crying, like, why? <laughs> no, and they ain't got no future in them. And as I leave, as I end this story, end this episode, remember, 
This was from, this is back in the days. Before BET came up with the Wrap It Up. There used to be a commercial from BET. And even MTV did it as well. Especially back when Teen Summit, the BET show Teen Summit was in effect. It used to, it was mentioned that, um. Get to get to get the facts on safer sex. I mean, the let me slow down. To get the facts on safer sex, please call one eight 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 be safe one. That was that was one of the PSAs about safe sex that I remember. Even though not all commercials back then were mentioned uh, or not are not seen on YouTube because it's old. The 90s is old. We can't go back to the 90s, but if we did, what what do we expect to do? Stay safe out of harm's way, especially when it comes to SEX because you never know what it was like to live with HIV AIDS. And you still living with it now. Man, it's crazy. So yeah. That that was part two of safe sex. I mean, my advice is this. Abstain from all appearances from evil. First Thessalonians 5 22. That's like the actual moral of the story. Either that, I mean, not only that, flee fornication. And also, use a condom. That was an old saying from rappers back in the 90s. Coolio made Too Hot and ODB. He made a song called Don't You Know Part 2, the short story, when he screams out, You better use a Trojan because safe sex is real. Real important. So think about what you're doing before getting involved. Because if it's wrong, wait. Wait till marriage. Because right now, at an age, no matter what age you are, and if you're not married, don't get involved. Even when you use a condom, don't get involved because it's fornication. You can't, you can't lose your virginity until it's time. The right time. But that's on y'all. Because for me, I'm going to stay stay true to what God says. And wait till marriage. And also to keep myself from getting STDs and AIDS. Because the dramas are real. Nobody gets away clean. Nobody's innocent. Nobody's perfect. But we all know what we expect for each other as much as ourselves. Even back then, when AIDS, when the AIDS HIV pandemic took place, and I was, I was talk, I, I learned some of this stuff in freshman year, mile and high. When it comes to talking about safe sex for a short period of time, it's important. And with all that being said, thank you so much for listening to the long-awaited part two of Safe Sex. And, of course, for those, for the videos that I made recently, including my gospel cover of the Lord's Prayer by the Harmonizing Four, it will be in the link. The link will be in the description bar down below, including the latest Cold Man's Winter episode, which was part one of Safe Sex. Definitely will be in the description bar below. And shout out to all my subscribers and all that. But all you, I'm, all you have to do is like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and there'll be more in stores. And What's the point of concluding Cold Man's Winner without mentioning this week's Sweet Lady of the Week? 
And this sweet lady goes to Latara Clark. And to Latara, if you're watching this, I had to make sure that I would never forget about you. And with all that being said, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, signing out. Stay safe.